In the last episode, we learned about different Azure hosting options such as Azure Web Apps, Azure Container Services and Azure Virtual Machines. And then I gave you details on Azure App Services. In this episode, we are going to understand what are the different kinds of app services available in Azure. And then we will also do a practical lab in Azure Portal where I will show you how to create web apps in Azure Portal. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's video, we will build on what we learned last time and we are going to detail out on Azure Web Apps and this is our section 2.2.4. And then in the coming episodes, we are going to cover the section 2.2.5 which is to describe Azure Virtual Networking including the purpose of Azure Virtual Networks, Azure Virtual Subnets, Peering, Azure DNS, VPN Gateway and Express Route. Then we will also cover the section 2.2.6 define public and private endpoints. And in case you are new here today, please consider subscribing to the channel for learning Azure and its certifications. As always, let's start with the definition. So app service in Microsoft is an HTTP based service for hosting web applications, REST APIs and mobile backends. Now friends, if you check out the syllabus for EZ900, there are four app services given. The first one is web apps. The second one is API apps. The third one is web jobs and the fourth one is mobile apps. But wait, I will also introduce you with two more app services that are so powerful you cannot ignore them. So keep watching the video till the very end so that you can also understand these two most powerful app services. The first app service is very popular service and that is none other than web apps. So according to Microsoft, app service includes full support for hosting web apps by using ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, Java, Ruby, Node.js, PHP or Python. You can choose either Windows or Linux as the host operating system. In simple words, web apps enable you to host web application without worrying the underlying infrastructure. As I mentioned in the last episode as well, that in traditional hosting, we need a server which is up and running and then we have to make sure that IAS server is running. You would also need to make sure that the operating system is also updated and there are a lot of things to care about. Whereas hosting your web app in Azure web app moves the burden of all these activities to Microsoft Azure. And the service fabric layer below it makes sure that the app is up and running. Moreover, Azure promises to make web apps up and running with 99.95% SLA. Additionally, you can also provision custom domains and SSL certificate with the web app. On top of that, multiple deployment slots are also available so that we can test our app in staging or pre-production environments. So what it actually does it, it helps you in moving the new changes to the production with no downtime. So it powers you with the flexibility to revert your deployments. And friends, we will see a practical lab on web apps in a short while. But let's first see the definition of all the other types of app services. Now coming to the second app service, which is API service. So according to Microsoft, much like hosting a website, you can also build REST based web APIs by using your choice of language and framework. You can get full swagger support and the ability to package and publish your API in Azure Marketplace. The produced apps can be consumed from any HTTP or HTTPS based client. Next on the list is web jobs. Now, as Microsoft says, you can use web jobs feature to run a program such as .exe, Java, PHP, Python or Node.js or a script command like CMD, BAT, PowerShell or Bash in the same context as a web app, API app or mobile app. This can be scheduled or run by a trigger. Web jobs are often used to run background tasks as a part of your application logic. Moving on, mobile apps is at number four. And as per Microsoft, you can use mobile apps feature to build a backend for iOS and Android apps. So what exactly you can do with mobile apps? Well, you can store mobile app data in a cloud based SQL database. And then you can also authenticate customers against common social providers such as MSA 
Google, Twitter and Facebook. And you can also send push notifications and execute custom backend logic in C Sharp and Node.js. And now my friends, let me reveal the other two very important app service and here comes Logic Apps. In Microsoft Word's Azure Logic Apps is a leading integration platform as a service built on a containerized runtime. Deploy and run Logic Apps anywhere to increase scale and portability while automating business critical workflows anywhere. And finally, we have Azure Function Apps. Microsoft says that Azure Functions is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code, maintain less infrastructure and save on cost. Instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infrastructure provides all up-to-date resources needed to keep your applications running. And friends of all these app services that I just showed you, I use Azure Logic Apps and Azure Functions a lot in my project and will surely try to create practical labs on both of these so that you can also harness the power of these powerful app services. Now let's jump on to our practical lab for today and create a web app in Azure portal. So now I am in the Azure portal here on this home page you have to select create a resource. So now you are presented with lot of resource that you can go ahead and create in Azure. But for now for this tutorial we will select web app. So on this page, you can create a web app to start with. You have to select your subscription here. You can see that in case you have multiple subscription, all will be displayed here. Choose the one that most suit you. For now, I have chosen the default one and then we have resource group. Very important to note that all the resources in Microsoft Azure reside under a resource group. So there can be multiple questions in AZ 900 exam around this concept. So please always remember this. And for now you can see that I do not have any resource group already created. So let's go ahead and create one resource group. I will name it as TTDB uh, web app. Okay, so let's go ahead. So you can see that this tick mark, this green tick mark denotes that our name is accepted. Okay, let's say okay. And now moving ahead, we have to give a name to our web app. So let's give it a name. So as you can see, this one is also accepted and friends, please note this very important point that the fully qualified name for your web app will become this name here. So in our case, it is TTBB dash web app dot Azure websites dot net. Let's move ahead. We will keep selected this publish as code. This is the default value. If you want to go for Docker containers or static web app, you can choose them. But for now, let's go for the default value. Then coming to the runtime stack, let me click this drop down menu. And here you can see that we are given with some of the options. We have .NET. We also have the option for Go, Java. Let me see more. We have Node, PHP, Python. So anything that suits you. Ruby is also there. But for now, let me select this .NET 6 LTS. Okay, here it goes. And then you can see I already told you the operating systems available are Linux and Windows. I will go for the Linux for now. Okay, so now you can see that we have to choose the region which is given as Central US as the default. Let's keep that for now. And now you can see that we have Linux plan for Central US. This is the same region that we chose here. And you can see the Linux plan is already given here. Then coming to the pricing plan. And here my friends, you can see a default pricing plan is already selected, which is premium version 2. For now, I do not want to go for the premium version. I will go for some free version, which says free F1. And this is zero USD price per month estimated cost. Let me select this one. And then let's go for the default value for the zone redundancy. Click deployments and on this page, I do not want to change any default value. For now, you can see that the GitHub action setting is disabled. For now, let's keep it like the way. So now I will go ahead and say next as networking. Here also, I will keep the default values, go to the monitoring. And now coming to the monitoring part here, you can see that we have application insights. For now, I do not want to have application insights enabled. So I will kind of disable it. Okay, because we want to save costs for this demo purposes. And then I will go ahead and select tags. And in case you want to give some tags, please go ahead. For now, I will keep it blank. 
and now let's go to review and create it takes a couple of moments to do this so here my friends on this review and create you can see the entire summary of all the options you have selected so far one important thing that i want to show you before i press create button is this download a template for automation so let me download this and show it to you so here you can see friends the entire deployment or entire options that you have selected so far to create a web app is now converted to a json file so you can see the template you can see the parameters you can see the script if you want to download you can download go ahead click here and download add it to your library and in fact you can also deploy it from here but you may ask why is this json file consider that you are a big organization and you want to deploy multiple web apps or let's say that you want to maintain a version of your web apps or any other resource for that matter in that case converting your resource in json file format is very useful in fact i will tell you one more use case for this in case you want to automate your deployments there is nothing better than these json formats but for now this is just a demo we do not want json file for now so let's go back okay so now we are back again let's press the create button so here it is now creating or initializing our deployment and here you can also see now we are at submitting deployment on this top right corner and then we have deployment in progress so you have to wait a little bit okay so now our deployment is succeeded we can go to the resource here click on this button which says go to the resource And now friends, you can see that our Azure web app is now deployed. If you want to open this website or web app, you have to come to this place, which says URL. So as I mentioned in the earlier section that the URL is the combination of the name that you give for the web app. And then there is a suffix which says Azure websites.net. So I will copy this in my clipboard, go to a new tab paste it and now you can see my friends that this will open a web app that we have just created okay so friends you can see that your web app is up and running and it is waiting for your content but it means that this page that you can see here is the default page that microsoft has created for you to start with but of course you can always create and deploy your own custom web application in the coming episodes i will show you how you can create and deploy your own simple website on microsoft azure so please do not forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to receive the timely notifications a lot of learning on microsoft azure including all these practical labs are coming up so please do not miss to sign in but friends before i close this video there is a very very important step which is still left and you must do it otherwise you will end up in spending or losing a lot of money so basically once you are done all these practice exercises then once again go back to your azure portal and now come down to this resource group click on this and here you can see the resource group that you have created so far so this activity is called a cleanup activity here in this activity you have to go to the resource group that you have just created there can be multiple resource group based on the practice or exercises that you are doing so what exactly you need to do is you have to clean up all the resources that you have created for this practice exercise and the best and most efficient way to do is is to clean up or delete your resource group altogether and here you can see that we have an option delete resource group click on that so microsoft is basically giving you a warning before you delete this resource group so here you have to type in your resource group name i can simply copy it from here paste it here and once you have input your resource group name it only then allows you to delete that particular resource group or any other resource for that matter so click on delete and now you can see that microsoft is deleting the resource group so this is a very very important activity once you are done with your exercises unless you have deep pockets and with that i hope you learned a lot on microsoft azure web app in this episode i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them.
we will meet again in our next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching